Who are the Idaho Four? Madison Mogan, 21, was a senior at the University of Idaho and was majoring in marketing. She was also a member of the Pi Beta Pi sorority with Zana Kernodal, and they both had jobs at the Mad Greek restaurant in downtown Moscow. That's where Maddie used her marketing skills to run a social media campaign for the business. She grew up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and had known Gonsalves since junior high. Gonsalves' mother said the two were best friends. After graduating this spring, Mogan had plans to move to Boise. If I had one or two words to describe Maddie May, it would be just an angel. She just made me proud. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jake. I was Maddie's boyfriend. So I met Maddie her freshman year of college. We went to high school together, but I was a couple years older and uh, didn't really get to meet her until she came to University of Idaho and she got in to the Pi Fi house and I had multiple friends in there and they just really took Maddie under their wing and uh, just took her under their wing and were showing, like introducing them to everybody and just were always there for her. For her. She was always surrounded by a good group. Um, but yeah, so I met her actually on her bid day of her freshman year. Um, I don't necessarily think she was supposed to go out that night, but um, luckily she did and I got to meet her that night. Um, there were times throughout the, uh, that school year where we got to hang out and just kind of, I got to get to know her a little bit, but I didn't really realize that I was in love with Maddie until uh, the summer of 2020. Um, we went to McCall and I got a boat that summer and we got to spend a lot of time on the water. We floated the river and just hung out every chance we got. Um, and then when we went back to school. I lived in an apartment and I would just always invite over the Pi Fi girls to get an opportunity to hang out with Maddie. Um, we didn't go on our first date until Valentine's Day that next school year and we went to the breakfast club in Moscow but we didn't officially start uh, dating until April 27th that year. Maddie was a perfectionist. Um, a good story with that would be um, Kaylee and Maddie's birthdays. They were like a month apart and Maddie's came first and she would always get frustrated because Kaylee would always go all out and just make everything perfect for her and it was like almost like a little competition between the two who could make the their birthdays better and I guess it was a re repeating thing throughout the years of them knowing each other. Maddie was the best at spreading love to all of those that were close to her Every time I talked to her on the phone, she would end the conversation with I love you. And I would always say it back. She was always smiling and dancing and laughing. and She was really observant of things. She would point things out that she thought were cute, which was something usually pink or tiny. Um, she always loved being comfy. Like if we're watching a movie or a football game or anything, she's got 
her comfy socks on, blank blanket, and was just always making the best of every situation. She was nice, she was funny, she was confident. She knew that she was, uh, like she knew her worth. I had, <laughs> I had to work for her, it was worth it. Um, just so confident. She knew that she was beautiful inside and out, but she was also humble about it. Like when she asked, she was the type of person that when she asked you how your day was, it was genuine. She really wanted to know. Like when I would talk to her, she could tell me about all of her friends and what they were up to. She was just always aware of everything. She was also, <laughs> she was really funny. All her jokes really would come out of nowhere and you'd have to do like a double take. Just be like, was that the, the cute little blonde girl that just said that? Um, she would always express her love to everybody and with words and hugs. She was really good at hugger. Um, she was always someone for her friends, her family, me, and just really anybody that needed advice or a shoulder to cry on, her person to hug. Maddie was the go-to for that. Um, she, she always loved like the whole process of like in Moscow, just getting ready with all of her friends. She would be helping all of them do the makeup and I'd just be sitting on the bed observing all these girls going, doing what they do. Um, so Maddie was my best friend. She was the first person I talked to every morning and the last person I talked to before bed. But. I was lucky enough to be able to explore life with Maddie for about two years. Um, she was the one who knew me best and she saw me at my highs and my lows. Just helped me through everything. She was always there for me, was pushing me to be better and to spread positivity. I think that's what she wanted. And she was the person that I loved the most and she loved me the most too. And I know she would want us to be strong and be as positive and happy as we can through this time. And just know that we have her watching over all of us. And um, I know she's in heaven and I can't wait to see her again and just give her a big hug. That's all I got. I love you, Maddie. Twenty year old Zana Kernodal an Avondale, Arizona native, was a junior who was majoring in marketing and member of the Pi Beta Pi sorority. Ethan Chapin and Zana Kernodal were friends before they began dating. By this summer, Kernodal was spending time with the entire Chapin family. Jasmine Kernodal, Zana's sister, said she was lighthearted, the kind of person who always lifted up a room. You rarely get to meet someone like Xana. Kernodal went to high school in the scenic northern Idaho city of Post Falls. For her graduation in 2020, she decorated her mortarboard with flower and butterfly cutouts and the words, for the lives I will change. I've never met someone like Xana before, ever. She opened her arms wide and let me in her life 
the day I met her, her biggest joy in life was to be happy and to make others happy. Sienna and Ethan were two peas in a pod. They were goofy. They Hi, I'm Jazzy and I'm Zana's sister. Um, first, I want to thank you all for coming. It's really nice to see so many familiar faces and so many people that had so much love for Zana, Ethan, Kaylee, and Madison. Zana was such a light in my life and so many others. She was a person I could relate to the most and she understand and she knew and understood me more than anyone. Losing her is the hardest thing I've ever had to go through and it has left me heartbroken. Zana was the funniest person I knew and made me laugh every time I spent time with her. I have so many memories and stories I could share about her, but I know remembering the times I had with her brings me so much joy and happiness. Everyone thought we were twins growing up, and I remember in some of our last moments together, we were in her room laughing in the mirror because neither of us thought we looked alike, and her friends just laughed. She was my baby sister, but she was so much wiser and experienced so much more in life than I ever have. She never let an opportunity pass her by and enjoyed all the moments she had. She was always doing something fun, and in any situation, she was all, it was always so much more fun with Xana there. I remember I would get so mad, or I remember I would get so mad because I always thought my friends liked her more than me, but she was a person that everyone enjoyed being around. She was so positive and lighthearted and understood the gift of life more than anyone I know. I remember her getting so mad at me for caring about the little things that didn't matter. She would always tell me she wouldn't know what to do without me, and now I have to live this life without her. I know she would want me to cherish the times I have with the people I love. She would want me to make the most out of every situation. She would want me to have fun, continue my journey in life, and constantly tell people how much I love them and they mean to me. I remember going to hang out with her about a couple months ago. I remember telling her that we should try to do a sister date every week to spend more time with each other before I graduate. I remember her loving the idea and her friend Ella reached out to me and told me that Xana was so happy that we were going to start doing that. I love her so much and I wish I would, have had, I would have spent more time with her and had the chance to continue spending time with her. I know she loved living in her house in Moscow with her friends. I would hear so many stories about her and her roommates and it made me so happy to know she had such great friendships. She really knew everyone and, every, and was friends with everyone. She had the best friend group and had friends in so many different sororities, fraternities and organizations. I was so happy she was dating Ethan and Ethan was such an amazing person. Santa never had a boyfriend before and my dad and I wondered if she was ever gonna get one. <laughs> Ethan was that special though, because I know she was picky with boys. They were always so happy and the way she would talk and smile about him was something I've never seen her do before. She truly loved him so much and I know he had so much love for her. They had something so special and everyone around them knew. It's comforting to know that they're all watching down on us from heaven now. Casey Johnson is a best friend of ours and her mother Susie Graham was like a mom to us. Susie had a long fight with breast cancer and unfortunately passed away last year. Casey texted me a couple weeks ago saying, I know Xana isn't alone up there in heaven. I feel my mom in the sunshine and yesterday the sun went through my window and fell right on her urn. I think that's her way of telling me that she's got Xana and that she's made it up there to heaven. That gave me a little bit of peace and I want to share that with you. This text made me so happy and helped comfort me a lot. I know they are all in the best place together and one day we will all be reconnected. I am so thankful for faith, friendships, and family through this and everything else. Santa, you will not be forgotten. You have impacted so many lives and have given people so much love. I hope I can make you proud and try to leave an impact on this world and on people like you did. I love you so much, Santa, and I hope you're feeling the most happy, content, and loved in heaven right now. She's like, she really, it became the woman that she was going to become, at the, you know, the last weekend I saw her, which was a week before that. She was taking care of the house. She was taking care of things. She took my keys from me and said, you had too much to dry, drink, Dad. You can't, you can't drive. We'll get you ride to your hotel. She was being the mom to all the kids and the girls. And I was really happy to see her there happy. And that's what I remember that weekend is her being happy with the other girls, taking care of stuff. The house was beautiful, taking care of everybody. Everything was just about as good as it ever could have been in my picture of as a parent. 
um, what it was going on in U of I, good grades. So I can remember that. Doesn't make it better, but it makes it a little bit easier. You know, to know that it wasn't like it was a, you know, there was issues because there was or wasn't. I don't. We'll never know. I don't know. So, anyways, that's all I got. And thanks everybody for coming. And um, we're good. Thanks everyone for coming. My name is Kim, and I am Zana's aunt. And I'm going to give you my testimony today. At first, when we heard of the news, I was so angry that she was taken away, all these special people. And you never think it's going to happen to your family. And then I had to sit back through my tears and realize that I really was blessed. I was fortunate to have Zana live with me for a couple years. And the memories I want to share are funny. My kids were grown, and I had Jasmine and Zana for a while. And I will remember, I'll never forget the time. I go into the bathroom. I don't know if you remember this. And she'd found my Crisco, and she wiped it all over her body like it was body lotion. Everywhere, all over the bathroom. Thank goodness there's uh, Simple Green. Needless to say, I just thought, I couldn't believe it, you know, how you do. And another fond memory I have is we'd go to bed at night, and I lived in a house that the floor would squeak. And Jasmine would go, and Kim, Zana won't go to bed. And she's keeping me up. So I'd get out of bed and our floor would creak. And you could hear her little feet run to bed. And after a while, it became a game. I never even went to check on her. All I had to do was get up and she'd hear the floor creak. <laughs> and then she became a teenager. And I saw less of her. But I do have the fond memory of her coming, calling me, she still called me then, and said, Aunt Kim, it's the prom or a dance. Can we go get our nails done? So I have those beautiful memories to share of going with her to get our nails done. And then she went off to college. And I don't know, I saw le or I heard less and less. Once in a while, she'd text me back. But not too often. And I know she was busy with her life. I mean, you know, we were all that age once. And then I heard that she found Ethan and fell in love. And at that point, I thought to myself that I'm so glad she found love because we all really don't know what love is until we love. Ethan Chapin, 20, was a triplet and is survived by his parents and his siblings, Maisie and Hunter. All three triplets enrolled in the University of Idaho last August. Chapin was a freshman, majoring in sports management and a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity. He was dating 20-year-old Zana Kernodal. He was from Conway, Washington, and attended Mount Vernon High School, where he played basketball. Tyler Amea, Ethan's former basketball coach, said he has fond memories of the 20-year-old. They met when he was just a boy. He watched him grow into the young man he was before this tragedy. He said that, quote, he said that he lit up many of my dark days, days when maybe things weren't rolling for me. Ethan comes in the gym, and all of a sudden, everything is meaningful again. This isn't at all intimidating, I must say. And I didn't write any of the funny stories that we talked about that is service. But I would like to start by saying my name is Stacy Chapin. I'm Ethan's mom. I'm here tonight with my husband, Jim, Ethan's dad. 
and his brother Hunter and his sister Maisie, who are also vandals. I think you knew he was a triplet, and that they they all go here as well. <sighs> okay. We want to start by extending our deepest deepest condolences to all the families impacted by this tragedy. It's hard that we are without these four beautiful kids with us tonight. We're here tonight because the University of Idaho is a special place for our family personally. Our triplets enrolled here together because of the small town feel, the beautiful campus, and the Greek system. Those were all mandatory must-haves when picking a school. We visited a neighboring college, no offense if there's any kooks here, and, I, and it felt big and logistically challenging to our family. The people here were kind and welcoming when we showed up for orientation, and we knew as a family that we'd made the right choice. The circumstances that bring us here tonight, they're terrible. The hardest part, we cannot change the outcome. And as a family, as a Chapin family, it's important that we share Ethan's legacy and talk about the impact that he made in his young 20 years or his short 20 years. So this is where we choose to focus our energy because we are now Ethan's voice. What I want you to know is that our family is no different than most all, all, probably all of your families. We sat at the dinner table when time permitted. We played games together. We traveled. We hauled our kids to every sporting event imaginable. We had cribbage tournaments, pickleball competitions, and basketball shooting contests. We surfed and spent countless hours in our boat listening to country music, which was Ethan's most favorite thing in the whole world. We hiked. Typically, the kids did that reluctantly, I'll admit. We worked out. The kids even, our three kids even got their wisdom teeth pulled together. But the most important thing is that in our family, we always had each other's backs. And we will continue to do so. And for all of the things that I've listed in the times that I haven't mentioned, we are eternally grateful that we spent so much time with him. And I want to remind you that that's the most important message that we have for you and your families, is to make sure that you spend as much time as possible with those people because time is precious and it's something you can't get back. My first impression of Ethan was he's just this huge dude that you wouldn't really approach, but as soon as you really got to know him, you realized that he's like one big teddy bear. Our mutual love for country music is really what brought us together. We gravitate toward each other because we'd be singing these country songs. We really got along. Kaylee Gonsalves, 21, was roommates with Zanna and Madison Mogan. She was a senior majoring in general studies and was a member of the Alpha Pi sorority. She grew up in northern Idaho with Mogan and were such close friends that they were practically sisters. Gonsalves chronicled some of their history in an Instagram post celebrating Mogan's 21st birthday in May. Pictures of the pair as tweens making silly faces for the camera wearing matching navy and khaki school-style uniforms and carefully laced sneakers and side-by-side -side in high school graduation gowns were accompanied by a heartfelt caption. I wouldn't have wanted anyone else to be the main character in all my childhood stories, Kaylee wrote. And Madison replied, I love you more than life, my best friend, forever and more. After graduating, Kaylee had plans to take a trip to Europe and was expected to move to Texas. Daddy and Kaylee were on each other's side every day. They went to other countries together. Karen took them to Hawaii together. We took them to Mexico together. They went to college together. They went to high school together. They lived in their own apartment together. They were sisters. She was one of ours. It was just 
heartbroken. And we know it. It's just going to take time for everybody to heal. If that's possible. I, uh, I just pray that it is. Thank you, everybody. We're going to share just a little bit of a story so you could understand um, how Kaylee was. Um, my father, who also passed away this year, he's that guy that uh, sits in the uh, lazy boy chair and has the controller and owns the room. Well, when he wasn't looking, he'd go probably get himself a beer or something, and Kaylee would grab his controller and pull the batteries out of it and go hide them. Like two years old, like two or three two, years old. Yep, yep. She was two years, three years old. My dad would rant and rave that somebody was hiding the batteries and we just thought he was kind of losing his mind because it was happening like four or five different times and Kaylee would just sit on the couch with a big grin on her face and just watch what my dad would do and how upset he would get. And I believe that's around the time that my dad named her K-Bug. Bug us. Because she bugs everyone. And it stuck because it was appropriate. She wasn't perfect. She was our little girl. She was ornery, and uh, we loved her for that. You know, it was okay that she, that was her signature, and nobody tried to change her. Um, Another thing, similar to the battery story, back in the day when we had cordless phones, you know, three or four throughout your house going to my sister's, her favorite thing to do was to throw them in the toilet. <laughs> so she would tell me, Christy, Kaylee threw the phones in the toilet again. I'm like, I'm sorry, sissy. I'm sorry. Can we dry it out? Is it done? <laughs> was it clean water? I don't know how many phones I had to replace because for whatever reason, she would throw those cordless phones <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> They did absolutely everything together. First dates, first boyfriends, graduated high school. They had their first heartbreaks together. Kaylee was 12, 13 years old. They're blasting Taylor Swift in the basement, you know, comforting each other. I have never experienced before two human beings who just understand and love each other on that kind of level. You got one good friend, you can get through everything, and that's what they had. To know Kaylee was to love Kaylee. Kaylee, she was like the protector. If we needed honestly anything, she would just do it. I remember I had like a professor I was having a hard time with. She's like, Katie, sit down. I'll call the dean for you. I'll draft the email. <laughs> we'll figure it out. She was in everyone's corner. She was the voice for people who didn't have the voice. The world truly lost some precious people with the Moscow, Idaho murders. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.